So the resolution before the House today is this House believes that attack ads do more harm than good. Now, uh, for this House, we're going to be Canada. Uh, as you now, because good and bad are pretty relative terms, uh, we're going to frame this under democracy. So uh, what is more harmful or less harmful in creating a better representation of the, uh, the population in the government? And um, finally, attack ads are going to be defined as any ad that attacks the personal experience or beliefs of a person or political candidate in order to um, paint them in a bad light. So I'm going to be going to stand on this idea that, well, first of all, we think our burden isn't to prove that attack ads do more good than harm. We think that our burden on side opposition is this idea that there, that attack ads do an equal amount of harm and good, and just by proving that, that we have won this case. Because we think that side opposition's burden is this idea that they have to prove that it does more harm than it does good. We think that by having an equal amount of harm than good, we think as good, we think that we've proved, proved this case. We think, moreover, that we can't that um, attack ads um, might do some do some harm. But as I said before, all we have to prove, it, all we have to show you today is that it does as much good as it does harm, and we won this case. So now, how we started? We started six years ago, and we started introducing debate into the sec ones in in class, and then other levels started to be interested. So we formed a debate society. And uh, the past five years, past actually seven years, we've done very well. The older teams did very well at Kingston, and they did very well at the finals, the senior finals that we're hosting today. And the SEC fives, the boys and the girls have done very well. At Yale, we did extraordinarily well. And uh, we continue to work. We meet every week, and we debate over different topics to keep their minds open to what's going on in the world, which is very important. And uh, now, this is the second year we've hosted the, the senior finals, the Quebec champions. And I think you'll see that Vincent Massey, all three teams, will probably uh, qualify to go to Halifax, which is very exciting. Um, the two, boys that ha two of the boys have also qualified to go to Cambridge for the big tournament. Um, the countries from all the Commonwealth countries go to this tournament. So that's a very, very exciting thing and it's quite an honor for these kids and uh, we will continue to work and do our best and I think uh, we're actually... Um, th that doesn't make me seem any better and that doesn't make my argument seem any better. And in conversation it doesn't make you seem better. In a political debate it doesn't make you seem better. You don't actually see politicians personally attacking each other in a political debate. Because that would just make them look immature and people would be like, this guy's just being a jerk and an idiot. You know, I'm, I'm just a, a jerk and I'm sorry for being a jerk. Um, and so what we see here is that uh, we have this, uh, actually I'll take your point first. Okay, but wouldn't you agree that like if somebody is giving false information in attack ads, that that would be corrected? That like the political party would go back and say, well, you've given, you're giving out the population wrong information, and that'll like make the party who gave, who sent out the attack ad look bad? You see, but, but that's the thing, we're just replacing another attack ad for another attack ad for another attack ad. You're kind of just leading into this idea that, in fact, attack ads just lead to more attack ads. So if you're saying that the, the, the negative effects of an attack ad can be fixed with another attack ad and can be fixed with another attack ad, we're just seeing that we're just turning it all into attack ads. And we see that, uh, for the reasons that I had already stated, it's still pretty bad. And that only leads to worse and worse ads and less and less actual legitimate information. So back to what I was saying about it legitimizes, it legitimizes an immature practice. It's not mature to do this. It's not mature to attack someone in a political debate. It's not a good way of making argument. It's quite fallacious and it's just wrong. But the reason that ads make this possible is that because advertising just create advertising and, and specifically billboard ads and all that, they create a blanket on which this, this normally unacceptable uh, tactic can actually be carried out because it just seems kind of okay that you know there's this it's also usually these ads are also um, done kind of through like this ad, ad is sponsored by this person but it's just at the end and it doesn't really make that person seem as bad as if they were actually going straight to the person's face and saying you're uglier or I don't like the way you like this or I don't like the well, like I didn't like the fact that like 25 years ago you hired a prostitute like the fact of the matter is that this just makes 
uh, this just makes this very Ill, immature practice that we just don't accept in society, that we just don't accept in debate, that we don't accept anywhere, uh, seem legitimate by, by putting it in ads and kind of making it seem like it's not really coming from the person who's actually attacking the other person. So what we see is that is exactly why this bill surely must stay. For it. Actually, no one in Canada now, this is not just a Quebec thing, we're known in Canada as one of the top debating schools. And the last thing, were public and most of the others are private. Bill Clinton's affair there... came out. It wasn't attack ads that did him in. It was the media who, who said, who had multiple stories on him. None of those were attack ads, Madam Speaker. What we noticed is that that was all the, the rest of the media. If we had a candidate that had skeletons in his closet, we would say that like the media would attack that candidate, not potential attack ads. But we noticed that this, this isn't a harm that is directly attacked, attached to attack ads. It's something that would exist even if attacks, attack ads didn't. I just try to guide them, I come up with debate topics that they need to know and understand, but really it's the amount of work and dedication that the students do, and it really is a wonderful thing for them when they win or they place to go to places like Halifax and Cambridge. What's the next news broadcasting could uh, manipulate reality. What we would say is that like, news broadcasters take certain parts or certain clips of what people are saying, and what they do is they, they then base a story around that. What we say is that they can control reality, they can manipulate it. What we notice is that that's also something that's not directly linked to attack ads. We think that like the harm, the, the potential harms of attack ads is not directly or is not limited to attack ads. We think that in the sense that like um, attack, like they're trying to pin all these harms specifically on attack ads, they, they probably do less harm than the other media does. What we notice is that in, in the face of like uh, allowing freedom of speech and allowing more public awareness, we think that it stands more ground to say like even if even if it does sometimes give some misinformation, which is usually cleared up afterwards, Madam Speaker, I think it stands to reason that like with freedom of speech, on the other hand, and uh, with um, with public awareness, it, it overshadows this. Wouldn't you agree? Well, actually, no. next year um, we're the the school, but it'll be it'll have to be the school board. Um, along with uh, Lower Canada College and Selwyn House are going to host both the Senior Canadian Championship and Junior Canadian Championship, which has never been done before and it'll be a huge undertaking with many, many students and coaches coming into Montreal for that event. So that's April 2012.